using what we learned in the previous experiment, the beer lampert law, we're going to look at the absorbance of crystal violet as a function of its concentration to see if we can find the rate law for the reaction of crystal violet with sodium hydroxide. Crystal violet is a dye. It's a lovely purple shade. When we're going to put it in water, it will dissolve nicely. It actually ionizes, and we're going to call it C+. Plus. That's going to be our crystal violet. When it reacts with sodium hydroxide, it makes a colorless product. And what we are going to do is see if we can take and look at the concentration of the crystal violet as it is reacting with sodium hydroxide to see if we can find the rate and therefore the rate constant and the order for the reaction. Is it first order in crystal violet or second order in crystal violet? Now, obviously, sodium hydroxide here is a reactant. Sodium is a spectator. And we're going to keep our, make our lives a little simpler by holding the concentration of sodium hydroxide constant. So we are going to solve for X, the order of the reaction, and K, the rate constant. We're going to hold the temperature constant because K is also dependent on temperature. So please look at the video that explains how we do this. And then we're going to consider which color um, of our LEDs we should use for this experiment. So to do this, we're going to take our nice purple crystal violet, and we're just going to take a look and see how the crystal violet um, the color of light is absorbed by the crystal violet and see if we can figure out which color of light is absorbed the best. So the yellow is absorbed very nicely um, by that one and you could pick either one of those yellows to make it work. Personally, I think the second one is better, but they seem to use the first one and the first yellow in this experiment. So in order for us to be able to use this technique, to be able to say that we can figure out the concentration from the absorbance, we really have to make sure that this compound follows Beer's law. Beer's law tells us that we expect a nice linear relationship or direct proportionality between the absorbance and the concentration. Now, if that is the case, and we have a nice direct proportionality, then we can use absorbance to figure out concentration, and we can actually do some math with it. So, what is our job? Our job is to verify that Beer's law works. That as we change the concentration of crystal violet, that the absorbance changes proportionally. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, and I'm just going to grab a couple of points here and take a look at this and make sure it's linear. So just grab a percent. Um, I find it easier to start with more concentrated because it's a bit more obvious for me. And then just hit go hit play. Now on your um, computer, it's going to be easier if you come down here and make it a, uh, a big screen, um, complete full screen, but I can't do that in record. So I'm just going to continue to hit play here and then keep scanning until you get a nice clean color change. So I saw it go over that yellow. I've got a nice color change. And again, same as last week, I'm going to go to the tools. I'm going to kind of estimate that it's in here somewhere. All right, it's not in there, so you try again, and you grab the right gray scale, and you shift it until you get the color of the um, gray scale here. It just fits in and just disappears into that ruler. Once you've done that again, remember you've got that is going to give you the percent transmittance. So I'm going to say, okay, at um, my concentration here, and I chose 40%. I have a percent transmittance. Well, it's not quite right. I don't like that one very much. Uh, no, it's about right. And just keep shifting it in until it's, it completely disappears. And I'm going to call that 70% transmittance. And you're going to do it again. And you're going to do it for another color. And once you're done and you've done that for a couple of colors, and you've got your concentration, and we can use just the percent um, of crystal violet because we're just doesn't matter what units we use they cancel anyways stop at the same color of light that you're using so using the same grayscale I'm going to switch my rulers here to get a lighter one go back to this one and I'm just going to push it through here or just move it until it completely matches kind of like the 96 percent and 10 percent of crystal violet in terms of concentration I find that I've got about a 96% absorbance. And again, making sure that you use the grayscale that corresponds to where your cuvette is in terms of your colors. I'm going to remove that now. And now we're going to graph it. Now, our graphs are really very clever. So when you do this, 
I'm going to put, let's say, um, my concentration here, and I'm going to stick to one letter variables because it makes my life easier. I'm going to put transmittance here, and we're going to take, I'm going to put a new column here, and I'm going to put absorbance. All right, so if I do this and I do my concentration, I'm going to do 10%, and then I'm going to do 40%. And my units for transmission, now I'm going to take it out of the percent and go into the fraction by dividing 100. And so what I'm going to get for my percent transmittances at 10%, I got a 96. At a 40%, I got a 70. You're going to get different numbers because you definitely have different eyesight than I do. Um, I would have put this in the fraction rather than in the percent because it just makes my life easier over here. Now, the pivot will do your calculations for you. So you're just going to have to go and change column formula. And when I do that, I can say that this column is equal to the minus log of my transmittance. Now, the negative log of the transmittance is by definition absorbance. It does all my math for me. And I go down here. And I can graph it. So if I put concentration on the X and I put my absorbance on the right, I can take and put a nice line in. And if you get a straight line for this, then it follows Beer's law. If it follows Beer's law, it says that we can use absorbance to determine concentration, which means we can do the next part of the experiment. So with that in mind, our job is to make sure that we can use Beer's law. That's part one. Um, to there, and then we're going to actually determine how the concentration changes over time as we add hydroxide to the crystal violet. Watch this video first as it gives you a nice review on how you get the rate law when you take a look at your time and concentration data and you graph it. So take a good look at that before you do your experiment. So with our experiment in mind, they're going to hold cuvette here directly above this yellow. And we're just going to do ourselves a nice um, um, reaction here. So if I press play, it's going to take and they're going to pour in the crystal violet. And then after the crystal violet is there, they're going to pour in the sodium hydroxide. Don't worry about getting the data right now because it's going to take a second and it's going to mix. Color is going to shift a little. And then you know you can get started when they turn it um, the light off so you can actually look at the grayscale. So once you have the grayscale up, you can pull out your tools and you can pull out your stopwatch and then you can pull out whatever read a uh, ruler you need. Um, I'm going to make sure it's well mixed by giving it a tiny bit more time. That looks pretty well mixed. I'm going to reset my time and I'm just going to call that time zero. It doesn't matter where I start. It's all relative at this point. And I'm going to measure the percent transmittance at that particular time. So I'm going to pull out my ruler. I'm going to see if that works. It's probably in there somewhere. Might be a little bit more concentrated. And so you're just going to take and you're going to shift this again until that completely disappears when you set it there. And so I'm going to say at time zero, I have a percent transmittance here of 59%. And then I'm going to continue to get some more data points. So I'm going to take and put in a fair few more. So I'm just going to let this experiment run. And if you leave your grayscale there, you can definitely see the color changing. That's telling us that the crystal violet is going away as this reaction is occurring. It's turning into the colorless product. So I'm going to take and I'm going to remove that grayscale and bring up a new one. And again, I'm going to shift it until the colors match. And I'm going to say at 9.07 seconds, I have a percent transmittance of 66%. And then I'm going to continue to go. And then get three or four good points here and keep recording your percent transmittance as a function of time. So I've got 16.33 seconds. I'm going to take here and I'm going to shift my grayscale. Is that fit still? Yep, it's in there somewhere. And it didn't change as much as it did the first time, which certainly tells us it's not going to be nice and linear. I'm going to call that 71% transmittance. And you're going to keep going. And make sure you keep going all the way through. Otherwise, your graph's going to be a little mediocre. So as we continue, we're going to take and we're going to graph this data. So our x value here is going to be time. We're going to see what happens as we change 
the time in this experiment. Our column here is T. I'm going to use the fraction rather than the percent. I'm going to need some more data here, so I'm going to put a column to the right, and I'm going to do absorbance. I'm going to put an A here. And if I take and put in my numbers here, and so time is going to be 0, and then 9.07, and then 16.33. And obviously, you're going to get completely different numbers because it will be a function of when you stop your stopwatch. So 0.59, 0 0.66, and 0.71. My absorbance, I can use the formula here to do my calculation for me, and that's going to equal the minus base 10 log of transmittance, and that's my absorbance, and it fills straight in. And I can come over down here and I can put time and I can put absorbance and I can see if it's nice and linear. And so if I do that and I put in a nice linear regression, it goes, eh, that's not particularly linear. When you get more data points, you're going to see it's less linear than you even think. So what are we going to do? We have to figure out the rate loss. So we have to figure out if this is zero, first, or second order. Now remember, if it's zero order, a graph of the absorbance on the y-axis and time on the x-axis is going to give us a lovely linear plot. This is not quite linear. If it is second order, so I'm just going to put a new column in here. If it is second order, the graph of 1 over the concentration is going to give us a linear plot. I did not put that where I wanted to. Try that again. So insert column to the right, a graph of 1 over the concentration versus, or here, one of the absorbents um, with time on our x-axis, because our absorbance is directly relation, proportional to the concentration. That was the whole key of part two. And again, this is clever, so it can take and do my math for me. So I'm going to change the formula, and I'm just going to type 1, um, one divided by A. I'm going to graph that, and what if I take and I graph that, so I'm going to go down here and change what I'm graphing and pick 1 over A, and I go, ah, it's not perfectly linear either. So you're going to keep going. For first order, remember it's the natural log of A. So once you have done all of those graphs and you have picked the most linear, and you know the most linear also from the value of the R, you're going to take, you're going to plot them, and you're going to determine the order of the reaction. Remember from the slope, you can get the value for K. So that is going to be the slope to get the rate constant for the reaction. And when you're done, you're going to give us the rate law. Now, you may not be able to type it quite into this form. That's going to require using LaTeX as you go here. But make sure you put it at least in words and tell us if it is zero, first, or second order.